Hello folks and welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host here, Joe Tolov. Here to talk about Money in the Bank 2024 for WWE this go round, which I have to say in five matches was solid. There were some questionable, very questionable head scratching decisions which I think people be discussing and give their opinions about but it allows them here to give mine give my thoughts on what happened at Money in the Bank which was momentous I tell you that but anyways guys thank you all guys all for joining of course if you haven't clicked or haven't seen my AW Dynamite review post that the yesterday or couple days ago Thursday night on 4th of July so you can catch that but nonetheless subscribe if you guys haven't already also notification bell as well but nonetheless let's talk about money in the bank give our thoughts so show start off So we had five matches. We had the men's Money in the Bank ladder match: McIntyre, Andrade, LA Knight, Jey Uso, trying to. Oh, excuse me. Jey Uso, Chad Gable, and wait, McIntyre. LA Knight, Jey Uso, Chad Gable, yeah, we had some fun members in the ladder match, certainly. Now, I think many people assume there would be surprises, like, People are discussing, oh, AJ Lee and maybe the men's match, Carson McIntyre, Roman Reigns, since the six man tag between the Bloodline and, you know, Cody Rhodes. Orton and KO was going to be main eventing. You were wondering, Roman Reigns, will you see him? We did not see those names. We did see CM Punk. And depends who you are, unlikely fashion. But the way the World Heavyweight Championship match happened. Which you'll talk about in a little bit. I'd say. Started really. The downhill part. I would say. The ending of the world title match. The ending of. The six man tag. I think. Kind of. Took people the wrong way. That's just my thoughts from what I've gathered, but anyway, so first off, men's money make line match. This could have gone either way for me. Either way. As in, you know, I would love to see would love to see Chad. I would love to see LA Knight win it. You know, Andrade too. Certainly be up there. But at last, who we saw won it, which I get why they did, but an interesting outing. As Drew McIntyre won 
the Money in Bank ladder match, which, you know, I love Drew, I'm, I'm a fan of Drew, avid fan of Drew, but when you look at what escalated in the end of, later in the show, you're kind of, uh, I don't know how I feel, but Drew McIntyre won a momentous opener to Money and Bank, and he won it, at least for the moment, the winner, men's Money and Bank ladder match winner, an hour for a match. You know, with Chad Gable going for it, with LA Knight, you know, there was roaring perception that he was going to win last year. And they gave it to Priest. And now, you still see LA Knight going for that United States title against Logan Paul. But, you know, I can tell people are disappointed. Jey Uso, look, I like Jey Uso. But, when I saw the rumblings and how people were going for Jey Uso to win or predicting Jey to win, Ladder match, and he did look for sick that he was about to win before McIntyre threw a ladder in his face. Jey Uso, I like, and he's very over with the crowd. There's no denying that. But as far as in the ring, and you know, as a singles guy, it's I don't see him as that main event, even though his nickname is Main Event Jey Uso. I don't really see him as gunning for a world title. You know, a mid card title, sure. But, yeah, I, I just wasn't feeling that how people were picking. Jey Uso win, which I get, but yeah. Anyway, McIntyre won for Tom B. Then the Intercontinental Tom match, which I think people look forward to between Sami Zayn and Raw Breaker. Raw Breaker, ever since he joined Raw, coming over from SmackDown. He's been on another level. We know how expectations are high for him and how he's done very well. And going into this, I think people had perception that Braun, this may be Braun's night to... Because Braun, with the way he's been booked, but I understand why, you know, in Toronto, Sammy, or in Saskatchewan, or Scotiabank Arena, whatever it's called, you know, given Sammy his moments, and... His own, his own country, but, so, and besides, there was that angle where the Adam Pierce were, you know, getting suspended, not with causing chaos on Raw, you know, it's not possible that this makes him snap again, and Braun becomes even more unstable. 
and you know maybe they're just buying time until SummerSlam but Braun definitely could use some gold and who better because I think people are thinking of Chad Gable but with him not winning the IC title from Sammy, and then, you know, you got Braun, it's like, yeah, Braun would be very good to take the title off Sammy, perhaps at some time. We'll see. So, the World Heavyweight Title Match, Damian Priest, Seth Rollins. Now, The Before I forget, I want to talk about this that happened on SmackDown though. So DIY won a very good sound tag team match in Toronto a callback to their match with FTR then known as the Revival in NXT for the NXT Tag Team Championships now back in Toronto they face a town down under Grayson Waller and Austin Theory and they won to become the new WWE Tag Team Champions great stuff and you know they're building towards Austin Theory being a big face against Chris Waller, so we'll see how that prevails. But yeah, great moment for Johnny Gargano and Tomas Champa, and it's also was great seeing Dax post, you know, a photo callback to that match they had in Toronto, which one of the best. In XC history. But now back to the World Heavyweight Title match. Damian Priest, Seth Rollins. So the stipulations were laid out that if Priest lost. He would leave the Judgment Day. If Rollins lost, he could challenge for the World Championship again as long as Priest is champion. And usually to that standard, usually the challenger wins when it comes to that stipulation. It's like the last, one of the most noble times where it happened the other way was back in 2007, Edge versus Batista, and Batista lost at Vengeance and couldn't challenge Edge longer for the world title. In this case, so... The ending was confusing for people, and rightfully so. And had plenty of people head scratching. So, so I mentioned McIntyre won Money in the Bank first match of the show. So then we have. This spot where Priest and Rollins are almost going for a, it's almost a test of strength where they're going for suplexes and they end up kneeing each other in the head. And then finally, Rollins gets the advantage and
he hits a falcon arrow or a priest. One, two, priest doesn't kick out. It looks like he could have been knocked out, honestly, or if that or just forgot to kick out. But then the referee holds up. Wallace looks confused, and then we hear McIntyre's music play, and then all of a sudden we hear about McIntyre cashing in to make it a triple threat match. So then it's like off timing perhaps? I don't know, but it was certainly a thought. It Overall, it made the ending clunky. It made a weird feeling to the match. So, anyway, now it's a triple threat. So, Rollins on the outside. CM Punk then arrived. We did have surprise CM Punk. You know, and all of a sudden, we see why. McIntyre won money in the bank. So, Sam Punk looks to grab for a chair and then he sees the world title and then he blasts McIntyre over the head with it, wanting Priest to fall up and gather the victory. So, and Priest overall retains. So, it's an interesting situation because they talked about on commentary while well, with Priest retaining, Rollins can't get a shot at the world title anymore as long as Priest is champion. So, that builds, and we saw a tension between Rollins and Punk. And we saw Corey Graves actually hold back Rollins. So, A, that's more of a tease, that feud, which the match was looking like it was going to happen at Mania before Punk got injured and then obviously the money match is Punk vs McIntyre but yeah Punk vs Rollins that's another match a few people are looking forward to so not only that but McIntyre was down in the ring not knowing what happened and then Priest were overall retains and so part of the judgment day. But we did see on Monday, you know, riffs bits of heart to heart it felt like between Finn Balor and Damian Priest. So, yes, but, yes, Priest is still part of the Judgment Day, but it feels like still the riffs are coming. And, you know, they played up the build for a while, or teases, but we'll see how it actually happens. As for As for McIntyre, you know, this just adds another layer onto a few. Again, I don't know when, how much longer Punk is going to be till he can wrestle again, but I will say this adds another layer to a few. And we saw on the panel post Money in the Bank that. McIntyre was incensed and was pissed. 
from CM Punk's actions because just like that, he wins money in the bank and then loses it. Which I can understand if people are upset or pissed because. Just like that, well, I don't want to say it was wasted because it did add another layer to this Punk vs. McIntyre feud, but at the same time, you know, Money in the Bank, Royal Rumble, King of Rain, those kind of things are supposed to be trying to build someone. And, you know, Chad Gable, I get, you know, he's got this riff going on with the White Six, and eventually leading to a stable building with the Kree Brothers, which people want, including me, um, Andrade, you know, they haven't really done anything with LA Knight. I get it if he's going for the United States title with Logan Paul. And I get why he didn't give it to Jay. But, yeah. Anyways, you get the point. You get the point. So, yeah. So yeah, the Maktar Punk match feud is just going to be great when it finally does happen. Hopefully Punk is healthy, that's the thing, Punk has to be healthy. But yeah, can't wait for the match, certainly. But yeah, so... And it looks like, oh no, it looks like Priest was hurt, or maybe knocked out, but yeah, it seems like, at least for now, it's going to be Priest for Scoother at SummerSlam, and we know who's the rightful winner in that, so yeah. Where does Rollins go from this? It's certainly interesting to see because I understand not wanting the hot potato the belt because obviously Gunther vs. Seth Rollins is a better match than Priest vs. Gunther, but we'll see. We'll see. John Cena, he did make a surprise though as well. John Cena, so it's been obviously a bit since we've seen Cena, but he made an appearance. I know last time, or I think it was last year, he was there for Money in the Bank and he talked about the possibility of having a Wrestlemania in London. Again, possibility. Anyway, so... Cena mentioned because... Golly... This really tells us how you're getting old, folks. John Cena announced his retirement. He announced that WrestleMania 41 will be his last match. And he will be at the Royal Rumble. He'll be at Elimination Chamber. Interesting to see how, because again, he's tied with Ric Flair. 
at 16 world title rights. And obviously that 17th will be historic. Or would be historic. So, you know, we'll see. We did... Then get a confrontation by Jimmy Uso. Jimmy Uso, again, another guy who we haven't seen since he got beat down by Tonga Tonga and Solo, but yeah. John Cena, I mean, look. You can love him, you can name him, but there's only one John Cena. You know, I'll be honest, I was more of an Edge guy. I, was I mean, Edge is my number one of all time, and I love their feud. Between Edge and Cena. And. You know. People. Obviously disjointed. About the whole Super Cena stuff. How it was. Back in. The late 2000's. But you know. Great rivalries with. Edge. I mentioned Randy Orton. Etc. Virgo match against Shawn Michaels, Triple H, etc. You know, a lot of really good matches and, you know, 16 tall runs. Yeah, it sucks. Um, yeah, but. A few that was very underrated, my opinion, was his few with Brock Lesnar. You know, that just was underrated. I feel. But, and yet, you know, Cena winning his, you know, 15 title run at the time. And, you know, Lesnar, you know, being part-time after winning the streak. But, yeah. Yeah, so. Nonetheless, it sucks, but... You obviously tell, you know, with this match last year against Austin Theory at WrestleMania. And then his match against Solo. You know, his matches are not what they used to be. So, yeah, that's only great, only thing. But yeah, cheers to a very good career, one of the best in John Cena. And besides, you know, doing more and more films and acting as late, you know, for John Cena, grant to him, you know, it's like the last thing I heard about him was Ricky Sinicki with, you know, um, Zac Efron. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then we go to the women's Money to Make Fire match. Really, when you go down the Freeman's match, you know, now, 
If Takokai advance after begging for a push, quote, on her Twitch, you know, I think, although Chelsea Green did get a lot of love in this match, I'd be lying if I said if Dakota Kai qualified for this match that I wouldn't have wanted to see her win. But with the field that was laid out for this match, the two ones that got the most love were Tiffany Stratton and Chelsea Green. Coincidental, it came down to those two, in which there were tables set up on the outside, both were on ladders, and Tiffany ended up shoving Chelsea off her ladder, sending her through tables on the outside, which allowed Tiffany to unhook the briefcase, and it is Tiffy time. It is Stiffy time. And Stiffy Stratton is now Miss Money in the Bank. Now, right decision. You know, ever since Tiffany has joined the main roster, you can tell with her look, with her charisma, with wrestling, that push was imminent and could it have happened in King of the Ring or Queen of the Ring? Sure. But in a weird way I think this fits Tiffany better because we know Nia Jax who won Queen of the Ring you know is going to fight Bailey at SummerSlam for the Women's Championship. And then, you know, you got Jake Cargo and Bianca Belair on the horizon for a possible feud in the future. So, Tiffany Stratton, you know, when that moment hits, and you know, especially for a heel, hold it around that briefcase. You know, to get it done, it's gonna be some moment. Then we get to the main events. Six man tag, Tama Tonga, Solo Sokoa, and Jiga Fatu of the new bloodline I mean I can't really call it the bloodline really it just feels like the new bloodline against Cody Rhodes Kevin Owens and Randy Orton now this was Odd to go about because look they've been teasing a possible Cody and Randy Orton feud just giving little glimpses you know of Randy eyeing the WWE Championship of Cody you know that he wants that title and you know now with Fatu join the bloodline it obviously adds a different element and you don't definitely don't want to see these guys losing and on the other hand Bless me. Mm. 
excuse me. But I think people were holding out the hope that Excuse me. That if this match was main event the show, then we might see a Roman Reigns with the attack on Paul Heyman, a Roman Reigns return at the end of the show to confront Solo Sokoa. Alas, that was not the case. But what's definitely shocking was the ending as Solo Sokoa pinned Cody Rhodes. Now, there was rumors about Solo Sokoa and Cody Rhodes being the planned match for SummerSlam. And I and the consensus online bashed that idea because honestly, again, I like so, but him in that spot, I just don't see it right now. Or you don't believe him as that guy even though he's supposed to be the new tribal chief or tribal chief in place now but so I mean with what happened tonight it feels more evident like it's going to be Cody for Solo at some time and that I think people would feel a lot let down by you know Cody versus Randy there's history there's story with that feud and it kind of sucks because you want the bloodline, especially after attack on Paul Heyman, to be looking strong, and for Solo to pick Cody, yeah. That just felt like um, popping the bubble, or like you know, took the life out, the wind out of the sails, I'd say, so, yeah, but the bloodline get the victory, and Cody, Randy, and Kevin Owens lose, now, also I'd say, thoughts, prayers, and hope she gets better, Kevin Owens' mother, he did announce yesterday on SmackDown that she's been going through stuff this past week, which is why he's been in and out, I assume, of festivities for WWE this week. So, best for her, and I hope she gets okay for. Thoughts, prayers with the family and you know Kevin Owens as well, but yeah. So, so wins, and yeah. So definitely the consensus about this paper was odd, I think to say the least, because starting off hot with two very good matches, you know the Money Bank ladder match. And the Eric Arnold match, but then you have that ending to that world title match and the money you make briefcase, you know, 
basically used as a pawn in this McIntyre punk feud, but also I guess adding a layer to an eventual punk vs. Rollins feud as well. So you got that. Tiffany Shrine winning the money in the bank was a given, was needed. Although I think the crowd would have loved Chelsea Green to win it as well. But right decision for Tiffany. The main event, yeah, that was not a pretty way for them to end the show. But, you know, with McIntyre losing to. I gotta say, with McIntyre losing to Priest at Clash of the Castle, and now the main event here. People, people going home from these PLEs are probably conflicted. Probably conflicted. Two in a row. I gotta say, but yeah. Nonetheless, we'll see. And like I said, congrats to DIY from SmackDown. They won a health attack team match. Our new tag team champions as well. But yeah, that's my money to make recap review or wall it down. My thoughts are after, but hope you guys enjoyed it. Though if you did, of course, know what to leave a like, leave a thumbs up. Subscription box is also there at the corner as well. But nonetheless, thank you guys. Be safe. See you guys next time. I made you to love and peace.